episode four of No Hipsters Pod. It's your boy Ronte, the founder of NoHipstersAllowed.com. And our co-host is once again, Alex, the host of What You Want to Call It. Alex, say what's up. What's up? I'm glad to be back. Yes, indeed. So um, it's, it has been so long. It's been about two, three weeks. Yeah, it? yeah, probably like one week. Yeah, yeah. Week, yeah. We're, doing, we're doing episodes here. We're mm-hmm. averaging two episodes a week at this point because we have nothing else to do. Right. I'm with it. I'm, hey, we we still productive, okay? <laughs> right, right. Corona ain't going to hold us down. Yep. And so um, this week, so much happened. Actually, I think this past weekend was a really fantastic and special moment for R&B. Yeah. So uh, if you were on Instagram, you would have seen that there are two battles. The first between Sean Garrett and The Dream and mm-hmm. another between Jonte Austin and Neo. And uh, so the first, so first of all, Swiss Beats and Tim Lynn are, are sort of like the Don King and <laughs> you know, Bob Aaron. Very like true, very thing. true. Yeah, and so they put it together, and it was really interesting. Uh, uh, the Sean Garrett and the Dream um, battle got oddly personal at some point. I don't give a fuck who fuck with me, nigga. They weren't fucking with me from day one. You need them to fuck with you. I don't need them to fuck with me, cause that's the difference. I ain't out here motherfucking tap dancing for none of these niggas, cowboy. That's what you do. You be riding dick and shit, wearing niggas chains and all that type of goofy ass shit, nigga. That's what you do. You don't see nobody chain on my neck, nigga. And I'm going to tell you something. I love Ho. You know what I'm saying? I love Jay-Z, nigga. I love motherfucking Beyonce. But I'm not around here sucking no cock, nigga. That's what you do, nigga. You cock suck, nigga. Goofy ass. You know where uh, you know, Sean Garrett sounded bitter and was like making personal attacks, and so they you know they played their songs, and I thought I thought it was kind of a tie almost. I, I, I'm you not, think so? Yeah, I really I still can't decide about that one, and I think people sometimes are blinded by fame because the dream is the, yeah. the bigger name. It's very true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think we discussed this as well. A lot of songwriters. Um, are actually singers too and have their own hits that they sing. Right. And like, yeah. Sean, Sean Garrett, Garrett doesn't, doesn't have a lot I mean, like. He did put out a single, but just he never like gained he's any not, traction. So he's not a star. I right. think he was actually was a love and hip hop for a season or two. I did not know that. Yeah, I didn't know yeah, that. I'm pretty sure he was. But I remember hearing a track with Sean Garrett on it and I was like, at least you know, you know, you see the name and you recognize it. You know, like, what? You know, Sean Garrett. Okay, yeah. But like again, what you said, like the dream is on a lot of tracks. A lot of tracks. So it everybody has a very knows distinct voice. Like mm-hmm. you know, as soon as you hear it, you know it. So yeah, you know, it's just, I thought that was a time maybe like maybe the dream beat him out just by just by a little bit. I would say the dream only because I'm very familiar with the dream. Just like what you said, he's in on the forefront. Yeah, forefront. Yeah. <laughs> and also, yeah, I think I feel like the dream has a wider range as far as style of songs. Yeah. Like he does songs like. You know, single ladies, or you know, I'll touch mm-hmm. my body by Mariah Carey. But he also has like, you know, I think One Plus One by Beyonce is also a dream. Oh, I didn't know yeah. that. And you know, he's done like he can do the ballads as well, which I'm not sure Sean Garrett kind of has that in his repertoire. Yeah, that's so. why he was getting mad. He was losing <laughs> and started doing the facial oh, expressions. Like, <laughs> yeah, see the facial expressions, and I think Neo made a perfect point. Those are almost like a disqualifier. Like, Yo, I'm saying it right now. It's an automatic uh, disqualification if if anybody face get any closer to the camera than this right here. <laughs> automatic <laughs> disqualification. I don't want to see up nobody nose. I don't want <laughs> no licking your lips on the damn none of that none of that shit. I right? any of that disqualified right away. What are you, what are you doing? No, that was that made me uncomfortable. Super uncomfortable. It made me uncomfortable. Super uncomfortable. It turns out he was drunk, and uh, yeah, no, which is why okay. you know you shouldn't drink before an IG live. But. Yeah, I realized that too. I, yeah. Yeah, it was. You won't be on live looking crazy. Crazy. He was definitely looking crazy. It made me like, okay, now you're trying to deflect from the fact that you're losing. <laughs> right. I, I, I just feel like sometimes people don't really think much about their legacy. Like now, this is this is part of like you're gonna be known for. Yeah, this. you're gonna be known for this, and unfortunately, you're not like a really famous guy. So there's nothing else we know about. About you, yep. you're not really a star, and yeah. so now your most prominent images are you biting yep. your lips <laughs> and looking and doing crazy. very sexual things yeah. during the the competition between John C. Austin and Neo. The dream goes. Why wasn't I part of a competition like this? <laughs> right, and right. This, and someone on Twitter said, mm. "The dream is mad. He had to go against a crackhead." <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but that's real. It was really, I mean, he really played himself with that one. Yeah. But yeah, the next battle, though, I thought was by far more entertaining and, um, you know. Super dope. Yeah, and just clearly a, a, a weight class above as far yeah. as the, the writers and producers that were competing. And so going in, I was kind of thinking, you know, like, Jonte had the bigger hit, like, I guess the biggest, like, if they put their biggest hit side by side, Jonte had a bigger song, Mm -hmm. which is We Belong Together uh, by Mariah Carey. But the dream, I'm sorry, Neo, I thought had like a bigger kind of list, you know, Mm -hmm. bigger volume of like songs to choose from. Yeah. I thought wrong. (laughs) Yeah. I thought wrong. I mean, he did like classic Aaliyah. Yeah. Also did classic, you know, Mary J. Blige. Funny enough, I never knew who Jante was until okay. everyone told me to tune into this, you know, singer, singer, songwriter battle. Songwriter battle. So I'm looking, I'm like, okay, duh, Neo, he's on the forefront, you know. Right, wait. Then I'm like, wait, hold up. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> well, like, exactly. He, he, and now I got a new Man Crush Monday because I went back and I started listening to all his <laughs> stuff and I'm like, wait, he's actually super dope. Like, he's hit so, like, he has some heavy hitter people that he wrote songs for. Yeah, and like he wrote some of their best songs. Songs, that's what I'm like, saying. You know, so I'm like, wait, hold up. He wrote some of their best songs. And I had to go back and be like, he yo, does sweet. he sing? Like, right. I'm got, like, bro, he's he does, talented. Yeah, he does. So yeah. unfortunately, a lot of people didn't know this, but he did have like a single back in like 2006 that I love called uh, Turn It Up. I Turn mean. It Up, mm-hmm. And, you know. I had to go back and listen to that too. Right. right. And I was like, wait, he can not sing. Yeah, so I was like, bad, right? this is lit, yeah. But like he wrote Sweet Lady by Tyrese when he was 17. Yeah, so this I heard is like that. the type of talent we're looking at. Yeah. And so, you know, at first you're like, oh, you know, I'm not really sure if they you know, if if he he stands a chance, but mm-hmm. clear winner. And I think it was almost unanimous across the internet that John yeah. T. Austin won that battle. Oh yeah. He 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 murked that. Yeah. Like he did. That, that was, was dope. It was no, it was it was just so entertaining it's like just to see like Very how entertaining. good the music was. And actually, that's another reason why I have you as the co-host today is because I was mm-hmm. thinking who else could really talk about this with the same me. amount of passion? Me, because I love R and B. Oh my right. gosh. I feel like sometimes I'm a simp, but I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> nah, R and B be hitting different. That's, that's, yeah, that's like it, it be hitting different. I be feeling every single word. Like, right. And, and shout out hats off to singers. I can sing, but I'm not a singer. Right. So like I, mean, I love I to I'm, so, so <laughs> I, I urge everyone to go to to Alex's Instagram. She puts on the best IG, IG <laughs> story sang, concert. I haven't sang in a long time, but now that I got time, you know. Right. Hey, listen. <laughs> but, like, I'm not a singer. And I, I, I was doing karaoke virtually just, like, last week. And I'm like, dang, I don't know how these people do it. Because I can either sing or I can dance. To do both is crazy. You have people like Usher, Beyonce, like people who, Chris Brown, they sing it and they dance at the same time. I'm like, right. bro, this is not easy. Yes. And so the next day on, on the internet, there were all types of like conversations happening. Some people were saying Kanye versus Pharrell would be a good one to have, mm. you know, to see. The word is that they're actually working on that one now. I don't, I won't hold my breath on that one. <laughs> uh, and then people brought up uh, possibly um, Chris Brown and Usher. Well, Actually, they said Trace songs and Usher, which Mm -hmm. at which point I figured everyone needs a bit of fresh air because I don't know know why anybody would say that. Yeah, I don't. I can't see Trace songs being compared to Usher. They're aside from them being both like male R and B artists. I think the 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 comparison kind of ends there. Like Trace songs literally has only two top ten hits after sixteen years in the game or Mm fifteen years in the game compared to like Usher's at least nine number ones oh, and yeah. countless other hits like I, I, <laughs> and I he's know. like Usher goes through generations like we've grown up on Usher yeah, and we're still like, rocking with Usher you right, know what I'm right. saying it's just they're not even <sighs> in the same category yeah, Usher can music. dance and sing yeah, and Trey I'm, Songz can just look good and sing you know what I'm saying I, it's I'm not, not even going into like stage performance I'm just talking about just the music hits, yeah. like it's just yeah, I don't even see where that where we start with that and then I guess some people thought uh, oh Chris Brown and Usher but I that's not Chris quite. Brown. I know. I feel like Chris Brown and Usher could be. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty... slightly better, but I still think Chris Brown is not quite that level. Nah, Chris either. Brown got some hits. Let's not do that. Chris they, Brown got I some mean... hits. The thing about Chris Brown is that he appeals to all different, like not all, but many different genres. If that makes sense. Oh, he's you mean like he def- he definitely did like the EDM thing for yeah. a while. He did it well. Yeah, uh, like that. he, he can really definitely well. do like pop music, R and B, like he's he's 
encompassing of a lot of audiences that Usher may not be. Okay, I'm, I might, I might give you that. I mean, Usher did try with a few like EDM songs, like with David Guetta, like like 2010. But oh, I'm, actually, you're right. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah. You're actually right. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Usher, well, that's that's crunk. But I'm talking like, oh, you did. <laughs> You got that one wrong. <laughs> oh no! Oh, yeah. It's funny. That's a that's a Sean Garrett song. Funny enough, is it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. All right, Sean. You, right, you little right, weird right. self. <laughs> you got some hits. <laughs> you got some hits. But right. yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know if you were talking about Usher. Definitely is. I mean, we could start the conversation with Chris Chris Brown versus Usher. I still don't think it makes any sense. But Trey Songs and Usher. Yeah, it's a like, no for me, dog. Stop it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's talk new music. Uh, Party Next Door dropped a new album called Party Mobile mm-hmm. this past Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, I've listened to it. I'm sure you have, too. Yeah. Um, you know, it starts off really so The first four tracks, you know, together, kind of like a, a big lullaby. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. But I feel like that's Party Next Door. He's, his vibe is just mellow. Very mellow. It's always been the complete opposite of party to me. It's always really calm. Like, right. let's just chill. That's the type of music he makes to me, and I love it. Right, yeah. Well, there are a few, like, you know, bright spots. Definitely um, Believe It with Rihanna is by far the best song on the album, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And uh, he has a few others. PGT, I think, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, what do you think about I it liked, overall? I, I like the album. I liked it only because it channels a different, like, it just gives me, like, a calm, like, come over, let's chill vibe. And I like that. Yeah. Um, the song, the the main song that is like the radio song, you know, the the song Loyal. Okay, you over Loyal. Drake. Yeah. Yeah. That song is dope. And it's to me it's different. Party next door sometimes gives like Caribbean vibes. He does. Um, yeah, a lot. But this was this gave me Afro Caribbean vibes and I liked it because in I my guess mind you were seeing more like Afro pop. Oh, I guess what people call Afro beats yeah afro beats yeah mm-hmm. yeah because when i had first heard that song it was on one of these challenges on instagram and i was like oh Timmy got a new song like <laughs> <laughs> in my mind i registered it as Timmy. then i listened to the album i'm like wait hold up this is party next door this is dope right, i like right, it right. i like the album um but again party next door doesn't give me party so yeah. like you have to be in that you know you got to know your audience yeah. and what you, you know, I, I love r&b so that it was for me. I yeah. liked it. So on a scale of one to ten, how, how are you rating that album? I would go with an eight. An eight? Yeah. That is really generous. <laughs> wow. I, go, I liked it. I wow. Like, I, but I actually do like Party Next Door. Okay. Like, I, I, do, I, know, I do, do like it too, which is why I guess maybe my expectations were high. Um, mm. I'll, I'll give him a six and a half. Okay, so I, 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 you, I so you don't like lullabies. I, no, yeah, I don't want to let something like put me to sleep. I do like mellow, but not like oh boy, like when is this gonna end type of shit. Like, I like it, but it's not all mellow though. The loyal song. No, 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 no. Some, no, some of it is good, but the album starts really slow, slow yeah, and, like, in a bad kind of way. It's almost like yeah, you know, like yeah, I know, but to me, it gives me like. I don't know. I'm just, I'm like a hopeless romantic. It gives me like, <laughs> come on, shorty, let's just chill. Like, you know, like, I like it. Like, okay. but again, I'm a simp, so there's that. Apparently. <laughs> so. so, speaking of Canadians, uh, mm-hmm. Drake. <laughs> Ooh, Drake. Drake got some publicity this week, Drake, yes. didn't he? So he finally, uh, you know, stopped hiding uh, the, world, the world from his kid, like right. he says. Right, right, right. Because he wasn't his gift from the world. Right. He posted a pic of his son um, that he had with um, Sophie Bersaw, I guess that's mm-hmm. her name. And yeah, the internet had interesting reactions to that. Um, I, I, first of all, I don't know what people were expecting from like Drake's um, kid. I mean, what were they thinking he was going to look like? Or, you know. Right, right, right. The thing about that is um, the child looked exactly like the mom to me. But people are saying, like, questioning if he's a father, which it's none of your business, first of all. Second of all, Drake's not going to claim a child that's not his. Right. Like, let's like, let's be stop real. It. Yeah. Like, stop, he has stop, enough money stop to... Stop being an idiot. Right? Yeah. I think the child is adorable. I think that child is a beautiful baby boy. Um, I do think that Drake is attention-seeking, but I'm not mad at him. I'm a woman. I like attention, too. But I'm like, you know, you could have typed that up and, you know, gave it to, you know, him as a gift. But... I liked it. Uh, letters always better, you know. Yeah, you know, it's just he just debuted his son. Like it was an album. I, if you know what? I'm not mad at it. I'm not. Well, mad yeah, at that it. was always kind of the plan, though. Like last uh, two years ago, it was supposed to like 
reveal his son with like a oh, big yeah. Adidas uh, release, and yeah. um, Pusha T kind of messed that up. So yeah, because yeah. he blew it. Yeah, he did. He exposed it. Yeah, but I, I liked it. I thought I think they look like a beautiful family. I thought that was very sweet of him. You know, Drake is like me. He is his soft. His he's. I don't want to call him soft, but he's just. Yeah, you know that's really interesting that, that you you your first you know instinct yeah. was to call him that. <laughs> I know and I think, that's so bad. No, I did not want to call him right, that. Right, right. But I think it's really interesting that you know that's part of his brand, mm-hmm. and I think it's. I don't wonder if it's part like maybe because of the the types of songs he mm-hmm. makes, or maybe because of how he looks, or maybe I think, a bit no, of both. To me, his look now it doesn't go with the okay. So I really want to correct the fact that I call him soft because that's so mean. He's just a man who's very in tune with his emotions, right? To me, he doesn't even look like that now. He looks like, he looks a little like, not rough. I just don't know the words. He looks a little rugged. I don't know if it's the beard and he looks very much more mature. He's gotten a lot more body weight. So he just looks, you know, he don't look like a man who's in tune with his emotions. But he is very in tune with his emotions. And he has no problem talking about his emotions. So that's why I feel like, well, Drake is already known to be the man for the ladies. Like, you right. know. So, so far, so. Rapper, he said. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what, that's perfect. That's exactly what he is. Like, right, he right. just appeals to the ladies because we're just yeah. moving emotions, you know? Like, yeah, Drake is dope. Yeah, agreed. He's I dope. mean, it's no secret that I'm a Drake fan. So. Yeah, me too. Right. I've always been a Drake fan. So. Right. <laughs> but yeah, no, the debut of Adonis was very, it was touching. It was it was the breath of fresh air we need and with everything I mean, going The timing was interesting. I, I, I'm yeah. still not sure why he waited till like now, but it is I feel it like the I, I feel like the timing was perfect because the world is full of uncertainty and he wanted to be that little positive, like, you know, okay, because he he wrote that nice long letter to Adonis, just telling him like, you know, in everything that's going on, I got your back. You know, gotcha. Gotcha. so I think the timing was pretty good. Okay, yeah. All right, let's talk winners and losers. Alex, I'll let you go first. The losers. Let's go ahead first with the losers. Okay. All y'all people in Florida, y'all gotta oh chill. Oh my god, y'all gotta chill. We are all inside and we want to go outside. Y'all outside not going inside. Delaying us getting outside. Stop. Like, stop. No, you can throw uh, Louisiana in there as well. Lu- I didn't even know Louisiana was going crazy like that. Yeah, because they, I think they were late with like, you know, forcing people to like stay in. Mm. So it's, it's becoming another. So it's difficult to, and then New York, I'm not even going to talk about New York. I'm not even, because they already have enough of their problems, but Florida, chill. Yeah. I'm begging you to. Yeah, those are like this pastor that just got arrested out in Florida for, you know, having you know, a congregation, congregations, yeah, meeting still. for church, yeah, yeah like yeah. it's okay, go virtual, like upgrade your technology. Well, unfortunately for these people, they're, they're making a political statement by doing what they're doing. They're like, mm. oh, it's a hoax. They're trying to like do this, do that, and so crazy they're out here and getting their people killed. Yeah, process. it's really, really crazy. It's uh, the losers are the people who are still not distancing. Because come on, son, the sooner you can distance yourself, the more we can get a little bit control, lower these death rates. Like, come on, it's yeah. not just you. First of all, summer is a wrap. Yeah, at this point, like just nothing's happening. Yeah, everything's getting canceled. It hurts, but the sooner y'all can sit down, is the sooner we can leave. Fact. Flat out. Flat out. So losers, all y'all people in Florida, get it together. All right, your winner. My winner is you. Aww. You know why? Because you are still cranking out the content. You are still being productive. Appreciate it. Appreciate it's really it. difficult to kind of, it's, it's, it's a sad time for a lot of people. And it's really difficult to kind of like, it's a little bit discouraging, but people like you, us, creatives, we're giving entertainment, which is good. We're staying grounded and staying true to what we do and our calling. So, uh, when are you? I appreciate you. Appreciate that. It's motivating. It's motivating. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who's your loser? So, my loser will probably be the weirdos talking about Drake's kids' looks. Like, in a negative yeah. way, which I think... Yeah. That's... I, I, I personally can't stand people that talk negative about kids yeah first of all like 
everyone in their life, whether you're attractive, least attractive, very attractive, has gone through phases where we didn't look our best. And a kid, that's so, like, yeah, that's actually, And if you want to know, this is why celebrities are sometimes... Don't show their kids. Right. Yeah. Like, they don't, you know. It's wicked. Why would you talk about a child? <laughs> yeah. The next time you blink, that child is going to be shitting on your looks. So let's not even do that. And I think that child is so adorable. And the child looks like Drake's mother. So, like... Yeah, people are just being ridiculous yeah but people gonna be people people gonna troll people are mean so yeah Yeah. weirdos yeah losers (laughs) yep exactly (laughs) and my winner is without a doubt Jonte Austin oh yeah I think he showed what it is to be just really kind of a silent I'm gonna say a silent killer a silent winner yeah that we didn't know because I thought I knew his catalog because I, I went in there unlike most people you didn't even know who he was I didn't even know who he was right. I had to go back and look exactly. and I was like whoa that was very educating right I went in there even knowing his best work his biggest work and I was surprised to know that he wrote like Sweet Lady by Tyrese mm-hmm. so like the big, We Belong Together yeah I, I knew that one but like Come Over Come Over I did not know about Come Over yeah Come Over and by so, Leah and that's yeah, a hit right 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 and so that's just you know quiet confidence you know and you just kind of came in Stole the and show. Just stole the I, show. I, I like, think Neo, 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 it. Neo didn't know either. Yeah. As, you, as you're watching, you're like, <laughs> that's oh. what I'm saying. Everybody didn't no, know. Nobody and that's the way to do it. Off the humble, like he's not even on the front line. Right. He's right. Shitting on the game. And, the, and I think there's a lesson to learn for all of us in that. Yeah. So definitely. You don't always have to be on the forefront. Facts. So John T. Austin, um, undisputed winner. Shout out to him. Shout out to him. Alex, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Plug your social media one more time. Oh, yeah. So you can follow me on Instagram at Olexi, and that's O-H-L-E-X-S-E-E. Um, that's also my Snapchat name. I don't use that. Um, I'm on Twitter, but not that much. Can't keep up with the young folks. But if you want to reach me, Instagram, Olexi. And what is the podcast? Oh, yeah, my podcast. <laughs> Bugging. Okay, so my <laughs> podcast is titled What You Want to Call It. So that is What You Want to, W-A-N-N-A, call it. And it's available on iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube. So it's a show. You can indulge. Enjoy. Indeed. Episode four. See you next time.